Good combination play here from the Cardinal. Much better though from Stanford. Stringing some passes together. Andy Sullivan getting a little more involved in that defensive holding midfield position for Stanford. And you can see Florida State, they get three, four players high against that back line for Stanford. That's such a challenge. They have your one target forward, but you've got three attacking midfielders going at you all the time. So hard to track. And a heavy collision. I look up and try and find number seven, Brynja's daughter for Florida State, and she's on the right side on the far flank. And, and then I look up two minutes later and she's on the left side. I mean, she's got an engine that's just all over that back line. Emma Koi Visto from Finland is down for FSU right now. Isabella Schmidt from Germany. Number 11 standing over her. As well as number 13, Kristen Grubka. There's the tackle with Sullivan. It's the Jimmy V call to action. It's Jimmy V week for cancer research. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. Coy Visto is up. Talented freshman from Helsinki, Finland. And so sometimes those those short stoppages become a gift because it gave Stanford a chance there to regroup and talk about, okay, what do you need to work on? What as a team do we need to get better at? Those are the things you're discussing in that huddle. How can we hold the ball more? Dictating the pace, because right now Florida State dictating so much of the pace of this game. NCAA tournament, they have 15 goals scored, zero against Florida State as you look at Grubka, the senior from Melbourne, Florida. What a presence at the back for Florida State, one of the best defenders in the nation. Bring his daughter, sprays it wide. Bring his daughter. Dagny Brynja's daughter drops it over the top. Not going to get a call from the referee, Rachel Wu. Fields. To the end line. Squares it back. Not a bad cross. It's over hit, though. Megan Campbell. And the left back getting forward. I thought she said I called that. Get the trash talking there. I think she should have had that corner kick, obviously. This yeah. call. Megan Campbell from Leaf, Ireland, who's also a senior. Sullivan steps up. Sixteenth minute, a 1 0 Florida State lead from Shayna Williams. Jane Campbell, a very talented goalkeeper in the college game of Stanford. Fact had the game winning penalty kick against Florida. Saved it and then took it. How about that? When a keeper can do that. And that in the quarterfinals. Go back to 2011. Stanford won the national championship 1 0 over Duke. 
This is Hannah Farr off the throw. Hart Shorn. And you know a name we haven't called at all yet, Glenn? Lo Labanta for Stanford. That center midfielder that is such an engine for them. Besides Andy Sullivan holding in there, she's that attacking, linking presence and just haven't seen her on the ball enough for Stanford in this first half. Here's your referee, Rachel Wu. Yeah, Labonta, a Herman watch list player. From Rancho Cucamonga, California. 13 goals, five assists. The senior will need to be present in this one. Jamia Fields right there, another senior who has been present for Florida State. Driven to the back post. Brynja's daughter was the target, who is so good in the air, it's going to lead to a corner for FSU. Florida State, corner kick. Again, Stanford just putting one post player on. Bukowska Matthews to take it. Crowley in front of Campbell. That Florida State player gets in the way of that goalkeeper. Towards the penalty spot. Point Vista won it back initially, and then it's cleared by Stanford. More changes. Stanford going to make them. Stanford substitution. Get the game number three. A Mac will come on, and Lee will come on. Stephanie Amac for Stanford, under 20 national team player that can play all over the field. Won a under 20 World Cup two years ago, and then played again on the team this past summer when they got knocked out in the quarterfinals. But what an athletic, gifted player, and a nice option off the bench, I'd say. Yeah, with Coach Paul Radcliffe telling us that she could play pretty much anywhere. You look at Hartshorn. Under 14 minutes here in the first half. Cassie Miller has played every minute of every game for Florida State. Again, only called into action to make two saves in the quarterfinals against South Carolina. FSU winning that game 5-0. Stanford still looking for their first shot on goal in this game. Miller to take the goal kick now for Florida State. Wonderful back line of Campbell, Coivista, Grubka, Crowley in front of Miller. And Schmidt and Hahn, the two holding midfielders. Jane Campbell will drive this forward. Michaela Hahn now for Florida State. Jamia Fields. Quick turn. Center back comes out of the middle to help contend with her. She's occupying two. Can't get the cross in. Hahn now. Good use of the body from Fields. And she tried to bring in Emma Coivisto, who was slipping into the attack from her right back position. And, and, and that's the thing with Florida State is they come at you, as we talked about, from everywhere. That's the right back getting forward. And so much talent, similar to what we saw in Virginia, in all these different areas of the field. Everyone good on the ball. Everyone good in possession. Bring your starter. Coivisto knocks it inside. Han, Coivisto, good diagonal running here. Fields has found it at the top of the box. Still Fields, left footed shot. Rinya's daughter was ghosting in front of the goalkeeper, Jane Campbell. But a good build up leading to a dangerous moment. 
And I think right now those Stanford three central midfielders are just being overrun by the numbers and the talent in midfield for Florida State. They're going to have to look at that at halftime and figure it out. Do they, similar to what we saw in the Texas A&M game in the first semifinal, do they drop a forward into the midfield? Do they start pushing up more backs to help? I don't think that's the answer, though, because you have so many high Florida State players, you're not going to be able to, to release a back. I think that front line's got to be a little bit more active in winning the ball back for them. Fields now. Touches it forward, but coming out of the middle is Matty Bauer. Ubagagu knocks it back. She hasn't gotten enough of the ball here in the first half either. Speaking of Lola Bonta as well for Stanford. No, and every time Ubagagu gets the ball, she's back to goal and then passing it backwards. So getting her faced up is going to be critical as well. Fields used her body beautifully. She's pulled out of center back. It's two on two in the middle. If she can get across it, she's driving towards the end line, going to earn the corner. But a dangerous moment. They suck the center back out of the middle with this great play. And you're seeing so much of that individual skill. Schmidt, the German international, playing it into Jamia Fields. And she has the confidence to face up. And you got to love players when they're just going to take on and get into that box and get to the end line. Penetrate out wide, center back's got to come out and contend with you, not an area they want to go. Jane Campbell for Stanford, aligning everybody in front of her, whipped in towards the six. Good defensive header. And this one will come into Campbell, who deals with it very confidently. Florida State substitution into the game number 18. Strong in the air for Jane Campbell here because even though it's lofted pretty high, it's been raining quite a bit here tonight. That ball's wet. You're right on your line. Nice and clean. And Jane's got some good help with Nicole Barnhart, a volunteer right. assistant at Stanford, who is a U.S. national team goalkeeper and won the NWSL title with FC Kansas City. And that we had the pleasure of doing in Seattle. Here's Stanford. That's a good looking cross. Steered away at the back post. Good responsible defending from Coivisto, but an even better attack from Stanford. And this is the beauty of Maria Lee coming in. Mariah Lee coming in as a substitute. Because she, similar to Fields on the other side, is not afraid of facing up. Good little ball across the Bonta trying to get on the end of that one. And the good news for Stanford is they had two, three runners at that ball. Well, Radcliffe told us, yeah, she's a winger type, can get good delivery in. Well, she just proved it there. This shot took a deflection. Still a lot of bodies there. It goes us through a maze of people, and it'll be a goal kick for Florida State. So they, uh, with under eight minutes left here, have uh, dealt with a little bit of pressure here. So who we got here? We got the That's Jordanian so awesome. under 15 national team. Yeah, look team. at that. They're over here with our U.S. State Department, the Sports Diplomacy Program, Sports United, and Mary Harvey, former teammate of mine from the U.S. Women's National Team, has been training them here and meeting with different people here. And then they're actually going on Monday to go visit Cindy Parlo and Carla Overbeck. And they're going to train them as well, two former U.S. Women's National Team teammates as well, train and do some leadership functions with them they're gearing up this under 15 team is gearing up for the 2016 under 7 17 women's world cup which is in their country in jordan they're hosting it international on the field here tonight international right. in the fans and it's reaching all around the globe wonderful images there of the under 15 jordanian national team Now, speaking of international players, there is an influence here today. Here's the Florida State roster, and uh, you mentioned it, Julie, a number of different countries represented here. Look at that. So international, the flair of that, and that is all down to Mark Kikorian and the relationships he's built over the years and how well-respected he is globally. Because... People say he's a great coach, he's a great person, they want to come play for that. And when you're sending your kid abroad to the United States, you want to know you're coming to a program like that, that you're going to be well taken care of. So I credit him for so much of that. Yeah, he's a pretty humble guy. He passes it on to his players saying that 
they become some of his greatest recruiters. They come, they have a good experience, and all of a sudden they say, hey, I got somebody uh, over in Iceland that might be of interest to you. But when you look out on the field, you you got Iceland, you got Germany, you got England, Ireland. Bring your daughter. Amazing after that goal how settled Florida State became and how much more confident on the ball they began to look. Here's Brynja's daughter. They're finding a lot of space now. Jamia Fields stopping, starting, trying to get the cross in. It looked like it went off her legs last. It'll be a goal kick to Stanford. Ranked interstate rivals, they're going to take over the Commonwealth Thursday on ESPNU as Justin Anderson leads the Cavaliers against Shaka Smart's High Energy Rams, Virginia VCU. It's part of Jimmy V Week, Saturday at 2 on ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. Campbell off the goal kick. Visto stepped up. Jamia Fields, she's fouled. Free kick for FSU. Want to see out this first half and get into the locker room with a 1-0 lead. Hikaru Murakami has also come on for Florida State from Nagoya, Japan, just to continue on the international theme here. <laughs> Cassie Miller, 0.37 goals against average. Kowska Matthews tried to head it forward from Kent, England. And then Grubka stepping up. And I, I think the good news actually for Stanford as they head into this halftime is that it's only one goal, right? Because they haven't had much of the play, they haven't had much of the possession or the shots on goal, but they are in this. And I think that's what they're going to talk about is how can they get the game back? And get her back in it. Lola Bonta, number 21, has had seven game winners this year for Stanford. But they need her to find the game here tonight, their engine in midfield. She's on the Watch Herman Award list. That ball coming into the box. Jane Campbell gets there. Coming up at halftime, lots for you. Recap of Virginia versus Texas A&M. Some great goals in that one. ESPNW College Cup snapshots. And then highlights and stats as we break it down from the first half here. Lytle played it forward. And coming out of the middle was Grubka. Boy, what a talent at center back. Kristen Grubka. For Florida State. Everybody's expecting her to be a very, very high draft choice in the NWSL. Florida State as well for just being organized defensively. Good numbers around the ball, good pressure. It's Haley Rosen on the attack for Stanford. Kind of a game changer that has come off the bench.
There's some better possession here from Stanford. Can they turn it into chances? This one driven into the box and headed away by Romai. They make that Crowley. Fields couldn't hold it. Point Visto now. And FSU will get a throw in. They're going to see this out here. Mark Krikorian and FSU staking out their position here in the first half. With a 1 0 lead. We're going to hear from him momentarily. Fourteen seconds left here. He still will throw it forward. Stanford came out looking very sharp on the ball the first ten minutes of this game, but a 16th minute goal from Shayna Williams changed the entire complexion of this. So FSU, with traveling support, have a 1-0 lead over Stanford, and there is your goal scorer, Shayna Williams, who picks up her 13th of the year. And that is the difference so far in this one as we are getting set to head down to the head coach of Florida State. Mark Krikorian who uh, continually has brought his team to the NCAA Women's College Cup. Mark Krikorian joins us now. Mark thank you very much for taking the time out to join us here in the first half. How about some initial impressions from you. Oh boy, I thought that um, there was a long segments in the first half that uh, Stanford had a little bit too much of the ball and uh, had too good of a rhythm going. But um, our kids battled hard, fought hard. Uh, we're able at, at different uh, moments to connect a few passes, uh, and obviously Shane's goal is pretty good. What do you expect from the team in the second half? Any adjustments you're going to make, Coach? We're going to try and make sure that uh, when we press that we don't let them out. Uh, uh, Certainly credit to them for being able to break the pressure and, and play out of it, but uh, I thought we were a little bit too stretched out. We're going to have to make sure that our back line gets a little bit higher when we're going to press and, uh, and not give them so much space. Mark, thank you very much for your Hi, time. Yes. Best thank of you. luck in the second half. Mark Krikorian, sometimes a man of few words, but boy, is he successful. Coming up, we'll recap the semifinal number one of the Women's College Cup between Virginia. College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual and a lot of FSU fans have made it here up the coast. They've got a 1 0 lead over Stanford. Here's your bracket. Texas A&M went down to Virginia 3 to 1 in the earlier game today. Florida State and Stanford championship Virginia waiting there. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that 3 to 1 victory. And it starts with Virginia 13 minutes in Mackenzie Donia after this brilliant pass from Morgan Bryant. serve from U.S. Women's National Team college player Morgan Bryant. What a ball that is. Just tips it right over that center back. And then Texas A&M on the other side, framing up here well nicely. This is what they do. They get around that second ball. Wasn't cleared quite well enough. And Minogue there to finish that one home. Minogue getting that one in the 32nd minute. And then this would make it 2-1 to one on the stroke of halftime. And it's a, a back for Virginia. Sonic coming forward in that one. So good on set pieces. And that's the thing about Virginia is they're dangerous from all areas of the field. Ford and Doniak scoring the first one. Now you're going to see a midfielder and Schaffer. She just finds a little bit of a window. And what a nicely placed ball. Looks up, sees where the keeper is. And Virginia with a solid 3-1 win. So there's the match summary. UVA, Doniak, the 20th goal of the season for her. Got it started for Virginia. Minogue tied it up on a second ball, the 18th goal of the season for her. And then Sonnet would get the game winner, her fifth, the inspirational center back for Virginia. We welcome you back. Glenn Davis alongside former U.S. Women's National Team defender or midfielder, Julie Fowdy. I wish I was a defender. I, well, you I tried. Did, you did your defending work in midfield. That's for <laughs> not sure. Much, we do not know much. That. All right, let's talk a little bit about Virginia and, and what type of team they will be in this final now after this first game. Well, I think they can take a lot of confidence from that because they didn't even play the best that we've seen Virginia play this year. Even Steve Swanson said it was okay. I mean, we're, we're happy with the win, but you take a lot of confidence knowing, look, we didn't play the best game we did, and we played a very good Texas A&M team who had eight starting seniors, very legitimate team, making it to its first Final Four. So I think they're going to go in with a lot of momentum into Sunday's game. Yeah, is it is it always good to have a little window of space to continue the ascent exactly. in this tournament? Exactly. You, you don't want you don't want to you know use your good stuff up too early. Save it for the final. Virginia's doing that. Florida State. Well, they've got a 1-0 lead here, and here's how it came. Shayna Williams, a 1-0 lead over Stanford. More to come. 
Recapping the 2014 Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Florida State with a 1-0 lead over Stanford. Shayna Williams, the goal scorer in this one. As we welcome you back, Glenn Davis alongside 1999 Women's World Cup winner with the United States national team, Julie Fowdy. All right, let's, let's talk about this first half because maybe in a sense, slight favorites FSU. Have, have they put their stamp of authority on this game? Oh, I, I think so. I think, you know, first 10 minutes you saw Stanford holding the ball, looking confident, and then, boy, that goal changed things. Shayna Williams' goal, and all of a sudden Florida State's clicking, and they're paying, playing with confidence. They're playing all over the field. So I think Stanford's going to have to regroup in the second half and try and get a hold of the ball again. No. Stanford forewarned about corners and set pieces from Florida State, and Florida State almost gets one here. And, and what a recovery by Alex Dahl off that back line, exactly as a post player should. She covers for the goalkeeper. Look at that save. Saving it for Stanford and Jane Campbell, thanking her defender for that one. And then the Shayna Williams goal. She finds just a little window by cutting it back, and what a beauty that is. With a little bit of a window, she puts them ahead, and you can see the dominance of Florida State in those numbers. No shots on goal for Stanford in this first half. Well, that's something they got to figure out. They took out Taylor Yule, their great goal scorer at the moment right now, so we'll see if that happens for Stanford and Paul Ratcliffe. Florida State, though, has a 1-0 lead over the Cardinal. Coming up, we'll look at some of the images of the 2014 Women's College Cup. You're watching the 2014 Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual as we welcome it back to the FAU Stadium here in Boca Raton, Florida. And we're joined now by the head coach of Stanford, Paul Ratcliffe. Paul, thank you very much for your time. How about some thoughts on what you said in the locker room to your team? Well, I think we can play better. Um, we're not playing higher, high enough up the field. Um, so we got to get our backs to uh, step up a little bit and we got to get some more sustained possession and get it in the final third and keep it and create some chances. We got to, someone's got to take one-on-one -on -one and, and get behind them and get some crosses in and uh, get some shots on goal. How do you get players like Shiomo, Bagagu, and Lola Bonta, two players we didn't even say much in the first half, Paul, more involved in that second half? Yeah, I mean, it starts from the back and the possession. I thought we were really quiet up front, but we got to give them some more service and we got to get them higher up the field. They were, you know, they were picking up the ball in the at midfield and it's too far away from the goal to really create problems for Florida State because they're a good team. So uh, my hope is we can move up the field a little bit more, keep possession, and uh, the next 45 will be a different 45, hopefully. Thank you for your time. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks, you guys. Second half right around the corner here. Let's see if Taylor Ewell and Stanford can get back in it. Your heart. Is Welcome back to the NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual as you look at Lola Bonta. And Stanford want to get her involved in this game here in the second half. Stanford. In the black with red numbers, not the most uh, commentator friendly. <laughs> and in white is FSU. FSU has the 108. By the way, I do like those uniforms, so they are sharp. As that one's laid down by Taylor Ewell, and they're hoping to get her untracked here in the second half. Jamia Fields coming out of there. She's Stanford. We will try to build it. Shayna Williams was in and around that. The game's long goal score. Ubagagu trying to get turned, tackled away there by Koi Visto. And Koivisto doing such a good job of every time Ubagagu gets the ball, she's right on her. She has no space to face and turn and run at her. Yeah, she had a great first half. Only a freshman from Finland. And has gotten involved. Uh, but, but, but that's the beauty of those international players. Freshman from Finland, but she's played in the under-17 and under-20 World Cup for Finland. She has a lot of experience internationally. Not only has done the defensive side of it, has joined in on the attack on occasions as well. Stanford here. Interesting to hear both coaches say they want their backs to sort of marginalize and the midfield and push up a little bit higher in the second half. Both coaches with the same comment, Julie. I know, and especially for, for Stanford in that 4-3-3, you've got to get your backs higher in that. There's no width unless they're stepping into that midfield. Coming over to take the corner for Stanford is Andy Sullivan, the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. Drives it in towards the back post. 